For Krimi Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Shomulikai. Joining me today is Umgeni Mayor Chris Pappas and his deputy, Sandy Limnikadi, to discuss their co-authored book titled Saving South Africa, Lessons from the Umgeni Municipality's Success Story. Increase the Umgeni municipality became the first local municipality in KZN to be governed by the Democratic Alliance with an outright majority. So what were some of the biggest challenges you faced after taking over the municipality? So I think that the first big challenge was actually getting into, into government. Um, we had a very hostile uh, municipal manager who uh, was actually suspended at the time, but forced her way back and interrupted the inaugural meeting. So the inaugural meeting is when you, uh, you vote your uh, mayor, deputy mayor, uh, speaker, and then the executive into office. And that's executive that then runs the, the municipality along with the speaker. So she forced her way in to that meeting and, and was presiding over it. So we actually walked out of our first council meeting because we refused for a criminal to be sitting um, you know, there uh, and the book out, out, outlines that. The book tells uh, um, of the story of what happens thereafter and how we managed to actually get uh, ourselves sworn in um, through sort of uh, the back channels, um, you know, things that we learned along the way. But that was the, the most difficult part, I think, was actually the first, actually getting the first day in office. And while there are acknowledgements of improvements within the municipality, there are, however, concerns over high crime rates and unemployment. So what more are you hoping to add to the municipality in fighting these challenges? You have to understand what the role of local government is. And uh, crime fighting in particular is something that is under the purview of SAPS. SAPS now reports to the national level. But what we've noticed is we're going to have to intervene in more and more things as, as local governments. Even if we don't get more and more money, there are many things that we have to intervene in. And in the book, we explain or try and provide solutions to some of those problems. Like, uh, you know, we've capacitated our own tra traffic and law enforcement department to be able to fill some of the gaps where SAPS is, is failing, whether it's new vehicles and new station, etc. Unemployment as well. You know, Mgeni doesn't exist in an island. Um, you know, there's no border gate between Mgeni and, and the rest of South Africa. Uh, what we've got to do is try our hardest to make Mgeni the, the most attractive place for people to come and grow their businesses, start new businesses. Uh, and you do that by focusing on, on the infrastructure, focusing on skills development, focusing on those things that are within your, your power as local government. But before you even get there, you have to be able to create this municipality that is able to deliver. And the book explains you know, what we found and, how, and the interventions that we've put in place to try and start to make this an institution that delivers. And public participation and communication with the public are some of the strategies you applied. So how has social media played a huge role in connecting the office of the mayor and councillors with the community? Very important. There's two sides of it. On the one side you have this abuse of information where previously in, you know, in other governments you find that information becomes a tool which political parties use. In other words, if you want access to information, if you want access to opportunities, you have to vote for us, like us, uh, make sure that you are constantly um, following us. But we've democratized information. You know, we put as much as we can out there so people can consume that. But what it's also meant is that we, we have more participation for ourselves. So not only are we putting out information, but we're receiving information and we're able to get to more communities. So it's an incredibly important part of our toolkit as a local government. And Chris, can you briefly discuss with us the strategic advantage of the DA's alliance with the IFP in KZN, emphasizing its potential impact on future elections? So I think we're going towards, uh, as a country, we're going towards a situation where our, our democracy is going to find many coalitions. Some of them are really bad. Um, I think the city of Johannesburg experiences that. Some of them are good, uh, and, there's, and there's examples of those across the country as well. But that, that is what a maturing democracy is about. And in, in KZN, um, you have two similar-minded political parties that are trying to work together to make things work. So we're still independent parties, and, and, and those two organizations work independently. But at the end of the day, we also realize that we have to deliver for the people, um, and, and those are the people that have put us in power. So this next election will be interesting. But I think what the important thing is that if you can get the fundamentals of local government right, and those can permeate into national government and provincial government as well, then you can get any government right. And in the book, we, s we sort of explain um, some of the principles upon which you can build a, a better government, whether it's accountability, transparency, whether it's public participation, as you said. But all of these, these fundamentals that we believe are lessons that we've learned. Um, and we're not experts. Um, we're just sharing with people our story of how we're trying to change our home around. And leading up to the elections later this month, do you think there is opportunity for growth in KZN for the Democratic Alliance? 
And are you optimistic that the party will do better? I am. Um, in the first chapter of the book, we speak about a beachhead. Uh, and Umgeni municipality being the, the, the beachhead. And, uh, you know, we explain in the first chapter what this means for the DA. But essentially what it is, is, is an opportunity for us to showcase what we do in government. Political parties are not only based on ideology, but they're also based on policy. And we implement our policy at uh, in the Umgeni municipality. And, and the book explains how we're transforming that municipality into being a delivery mechanism of what we've promised the, the voters in our manifesto. And KZN uh, holds a similar opportunity. We are able to showcase to say, well, this is how we do it. Uh, we don't have to point to Cape Town. We don't have to point to the Western Cape. Here's something that's right close to home. Uh, people can see it, people can touch it, people can visit it, and people can engage with uh, the leaders of government there and show how we can grow. So I'm excited about um, the DA's growth in KZN uh, for the next election. And Sandy, let's talk to us more about the importance of digital empowerment for all citizens. We think it's, it's, it's really important, and I think um, Chris has touched on a little bit on it, but also we've been able to go out into communities that never had Wi-Fi hotspots before, and we've implemented a number of those so that people are able to be connected. So that we speak about Kokutlamini in, in, in one of the chapters in the book, and we talk about how, if, even though kokutlamini has got a Nokia 3310, but there's somebody in the family who's got a smartphone and is able to communicate with us. But even beyond that, we've, we've come up with various different initiatives. So we've got a toll-free line that we never had before. So if you've got a problem, any service delivery problem, you can phone and it doesn't, ch- it doesn't take your airtime up. Um, there's other issues such as the WhatsApp reporting line that we've opened, allowing for people to do that. But also internally, so we are digitizing a lot of the stuff that we are doing. So we walked into our planning department and we had piles and piles of, of paperwork. So if that building goes up in, in, in flames, well, that's people's plans. And, you know, it's, it's really important. And we, we do try to reach out to as many people as possible. Um, and I, I know you're going to be rolling out the second phase of, of, of Wi-Fi hotspots throughout the entire municipality. And we're going into rural areas as well so that people can be able to connect up Begum Sebens if that's what they need to do. And briefly talk to us more on how you dealt with the disorder, CADA deployment and corruption of the previous administration. I think we're still dealing with that. Um, it, it hasn't completely gone away. We've fired nine senior managers thus far. Some of them were fired, some of them left once we started looking into what they were doing. Um, but we talk about, uh, there's another chapter in the book where we talk about people that were willing to work with us. So we've had to deal with those guys. It's been difficult and um, we often talk about how expensive it is to go through discipline hearings and investigations, forensic investigations, to, to get to the crux of what they were doing. But slowly but surely we're starting to clean our house, but we obviously have to do it within the limitations of labor law. So it's, most people think we can go in there and just fire everyone. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. A particular municipality did that and they had to reinstate everyone. So. And you also say the municipality is faced with the challenge of uncollected traffic fines. So talk to us more about the tender inviting innovative solution to ensure fine payments and what you will do to enhance other law enforcement activities. Uh, so we're not reinventing the wheel. We, we're going out and we're seeing to say, we went as far as Nelspreet to say, okay, what are you guys doing? And... Um, we got there and we, we, we saw this technology, we like this technology, and we will be the first municipality in KZN to implement it. So basically, it's your number plate recognition system and we, we find you on the spot. So that's obviously if you have an outstanding summons and you haven't paid it, then we'll be able to deal with you decisively right then and then. Because what, what tends to happen is that we issue the fines out, but we're not collecting them. So we're hoping to do that. Um, and then, of course, as Chris said earlier, we've invested heavily in law enforcement. We've bought new traffic vehicles. We've uh, hired new staff. We're going to hire new war- traffic wardens now as well. We've built in a facility for them. So when <laughs> they were actually chilling in the control room. That's where they were having their lunch. That's where they were changing. Now they've got their own facility. Because we want to say that we've capacitated you enough now. But now this is what we want you to go and do. Uh, and our cameras are going to go live in a couple of weeks. So we've got cameras in the CBD. So that will assist people and make them feel a lot safer. And Sandile, in what way does your approach to governance fundamentally change the potential landscape in KZN? I think Chris touched on that a bit. I think people <coughs> tend to look at Umgen and say, okay, things are happening in Umgen. And are things 100% there? Definitely not. Two and a half years into government, there's still that, a lot that needs to be done. But people are then able to compare to say, okay, Papa Swin's a good team again. And then they can say, would, would I like that for my municipality? Or would I like that replicated at a national or provincial level? So it, it, it's given us an opportunity to showcase what we can do. And hopefully people can see that and buy into it. And lastly, what are you hoping people take away after reading this book? 
the only thing we we hope well is that people you know get a sense of hope so we live in a sense of despair at the moment you pick up the newspaper it's all negative stories um, people think that it's not possible to turn around an institution such as a municipality so we really hope that yeah people become a lot more hopeful that was Chris Papas and Sandy Lemnikati speaking to Krima Media's policy about saving South Africa. Lessons from the Umgeni Municipality success story.